Good afternoon gentlemen and we're back for another video. I've had several people ask me questions about do you really have to dissolve it and then precipitate it out? Why can't you just put sterling silver straight into your silver cell and come with silver on the other end? Well, it don't quite work like that and I'll explain to you why and I'm going to explain a little bit about the uh, theory of the solutions behind the silver cell and how all that works. Now the calculations that I've done here are based on a four liter cell, four liters of solution, being able to process 50 ounces of silver. Now, as you'll see in this video, you could probably really do more than 50 ounces of silver, but what I've done is I've calculated that based on a certain amount of pollutants in the solution, and the most main pollutant would be copper. Now, being able to process 50 troy ounces means that we can process 1,555 grams of silver before our solution is depleted and we have to swap it out. So you'll be able to process a little over three pounds, give or take. Now those are based on, I call them dummy numbers. Those are based on dummy numbers. As you'll see down here, as long as you keep your uh, copper pollution in your solution down, you'll be able to process a lot more than 50 troy ounces. But the 50 troy ounces that I stipulated the uh, stainless steel silver videos are for uh, a lot of novices and first time users who will be using the cell. They don't always perfect the process in the beginning. So they'll carry over a lot of copper because they don't have the proper washing procedure. Or they had too much nitrate and didn't cement correctly. Or there, there's a lot of reasons you can carry over some uh, pollutants into your solutions and what that's going to do is cut down on the life of your cell and the amount of uh, product that you're going to be able to produce before you have to change your solutions out. Now this is for 300 grams in solution which is a little over 9.7 troy ounces so if you're setting up a silver cell uh, you're going to have quite a bit tied up in solution. Uh, that's 9.7 troy ounces in solution. You're going to have hung, some hung up uh, somewhere along in the process in anoid bars or in solutions or filter bags or whatever. So you figure you're going to have uh, 12 troy ounces probably Hell, if not 16, if you're running a lot of material, you could have a lot hung up in solutions and things. But say uh, 12 troy ounces and, uh, I don't know, $16 a day. You're looking at, you got a couple of hundred bucks. So if you're going to play with a silver cell to uh, purify silver, just know that first off, you're going to have to front $200 worth of uh silver in the system at any time before you start being able to produce the first gram of uh, actual silver that you can purify. But we started with a solution of 300 grams and that's in a 4 liter solution. Now when you first dissolve 300 grams it won't take but about 6 or 700 milliliters of solution to dissolve that in nitric acid and then you're going to dilute that down to uh, four liters of solution. Uh, you could actually dilute it down to five liters. You could make this a one gallon cell if you want to. Just adjust these numbers the way that I'm going to give them to you and you'll be able to figure out any type of cell. Uh, now here that's going to leave us with a starting grams per liter of 75 grams per liter. And what that is, is that's the 300 grams that we started with to make the solution up divided by the four deleters that we diluted it down to, which is going to be we got 75 grams per liter in our solution. Now, out of all the uh, research and everything that I've read, you asked where did these numbers come up from? Well, the, the actual number that you're going to go by is before the co-precipitation of uh, copper 
starts happening in your silver crystals. So there comes a point when there's a certain balance of silver and copper in the solution that the copper is going to start uh, precipitating out with the silver. And that number happens to be 50 grams per liter. Anything underneath that, you're going to start winding up with copper as a contaminant in your silver. So, at 50 grams per liter, times the four liters we have, that comes up to 200 grams minimum until the co-precipitation starts. So at 50 grams per liter times the four liters of our volume of solution, we should have a minimum of 200 grams in there until copper starts co-precipitating with our silver crystals. Now. We started with 300 grams of silver in our solution and we get to 200 grams before co-precipitation starts to take effect. So between them we have 100 grams of silver in our solution that we have to displace. So, we could displace 100 grams of silver before we reach the 200 gram minimum where we're going to start uh, precipitating copper with our silver and then uh, the purity of our silver is going to drop uh, exponentially and dramatically. Now, we know from some of our previous videos that one gram of copper will displace 3.4 grams of silver in solution. So, whenever I precipitate my silver from a solution with the copper bars, I could figure out how much silver I'm going to drop. If I put a pound of copper in there, I will drop 3.4 pounds of silver. But in this instance, we're using grams. Okay, so one gram will displace 3.4 grams of silver in solution. So every gram of copper we introduce in our cell, we're going to rob it of 3.4 grams of silver that we need to do its job. So remember we've only got a hundred grams of silver to displace before we reach our threshold and things get dirty so if we have a hundred grams of silver to displace we could divide that by 3.4 grams which one gram of copper will displace 3.4 grams of silver if we have a hundred grams to displace and each gram of copper displaces 3.4 grams, then we only need 29.4 grams of copper to be introduced into this solution before we reach our threshold. So, how do we figure out how many grams we're going to introduce? Well, we're going to move down here to the bottom, and I've set up some examples for you. Whenever you precipitate your silver from a nitrate solution using copper, according to how you wash it and according to how much free nitric you had, determines how much copper is going to remain in the solution. So, if you've got a 1% copper contamination and it's 99% silver, for every 100 grams of material, you're going to have one gram of copper per hundred grams of silver. So it's going to be 99 grams of silver and one gram of copper. Now remember, if we introduce a gram of copper, it's going to displace 3.4 grams of silver. So, for 95% uh, silver, 5% copper, there's 5 grams of copper for every 100 grams of, of material. So, if we go down here and use those same numbers, what we can look at is, if we use a feedstock that's 99% silver and 1% copper, 
we can run 2,900 grams through the cell until the threshold is reached. If we use 98% silver and 2% copper, wow, look at that. We can only run half of that material through there until we reach the threshold. And if you'll notice up here, my cell is set up to process 1,555 grams before it reaches depletion. If we look down here, we can see that I've geared that for a 98% silver, 2% copper feedstock. It's about 1,500 grams you're going to be able to run through this cell, which is going to be 50 troy ounces or thereabouts. Now, if you only have 1% copper, you're going to be able to run almost 100 troy ounces through this same solution before you deplete it and it, re and it reaches its maximum life. But let's go on down through here. What if it's 3% copper? Ooh, look at that. You're only going to run a thousand grams of silver through your cell before you reach the threshold and it starts becoming trashy. 4% copper? You only get 750 grams. 5% copper? You only get 600 grams. Now, Let's go down here to sterling, which is 92.5%, and I don't know what that number is. I haven't figured that number out, but judging by how quick it's dropping, you would only be able to process 300 grams or so of sterling through a cell before you would deplete the solution. So there's your answer as to why you can't just put sterling silver into a silver cell. You just chew the solution up too quick. You cannot use sterling silver. You need to dissolve it. You need to precipitate it with copper. And then according to how you precipitate it and wash it is going to dictate these numbers right here and these numbers right here are going to dictate how much you can run through that cell before you reach that mass maximum threshold. Now down here at the bottom I've got one more point to bring up about the silver cell. It's not only copper that you will introduce into your silver cell. There will be some nickel sometimes that carries over. Uh, there may be uh, some uh, gold or platinum or something else. So let me explain to you what's going to happen. Platinum and gold are unreactive with nitric acid. So they're not going to dissolve at the anoid. They're going to wind up trapped in your filter basket right here. That's what's going to happen with them. Now, the next on this list, and this is going from the least reactive metal to the most reactive metal. And as you go from one to the other, you've got positive here, negative here, and you've got voltage potential between these is what you've got. So these two are inert, and they're not going to dissolve. They left uh, palladium off of here. If you have palladium mixed in with your silver that carries over because palladium is going to cement out in your bucket, palladium is going to carry over to your anoid bar. If you have palladium that gets introduced into your cell, uh, you're not going to be able to separate it with the silver cell. It's going to go into solution quicker because of the voltage potential and it's going to co-precipitate with your silver which is lower on the reactive metals right here. And then below that is copper. Now the silver's in the solution and going into the solution in the anoid. The copper, you can only build up a certain percentage before it starts co-precipitating with the silver. Well, that is 50 grams a liter. Well, when you get lower on this, these become more reactive. So if you have a high percentage of iron, or you have a high percentage of zinc, and here where it's 50 grams per liter, because the voltage potential is lower, it takes less 
of, of the pollutant before it starts co precipitating. So if you have something that may only be as low as, uh, I don't know, four or five grams a liter of iron, and you've got zinc, since it's more reactive, it takes even less. It may only take two grams per liter of zinc. And it will pollute your silver crystals quicker than the copper or the iron will. So where it's at on this list right here will determine how much of a pollutant starts co-precipitating with your other metals. And I hope that's filled some things in for you all. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask me, and I hope you enjoyed the video, gentlemen.